Oh, bruh, bruh. Oh, I love it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Good people. Good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. People, it is Thirsty Thursday. It is week number nine in the NFL. I don't even know who plays tonight, but we'll be live streaming tonight, watching some football. You know the sad thing is we wait all year long for football season to get here, and it goes by so damn fast. Here it is. is the Dallas Cowboys versus the Philadelphia Eagles. It don't get no better than this. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble. We are here. And I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say that Philly 500 hasn't been the usual Philly 500. Philly 500 has not been coming after me like he usually does, where he tells me, your team stinks, they're ass ass, they suck. My Eagles are the greatest team of all time. I'm just wondering where that energy is, Philly. Now, I, I don't know. You know, I, I look at it this way, okay? I'm going to be fair. Right now, Cowboys, the last couple of weeks, seem to have gotten themselves together a little bit better. They've gotten healthier than they've been. We got good news with Tyron Smith. He's not going to be practicing. They're working on rehabbing and making sure they don't aggravate the next so he can at least start the game. Of course, we don't have digs. But for the most part, this is as healthy as the Cowboys have been all off all year, all year. This will be the most consistency. This will be the third time that we will have had our offensive line fully on the field. Now, don't let the people out there try and tell you the bullshit that, you know, well, the Cowboys, they got, you know, a top five offensive line. They do when they're healthy. But out of the seven games they've played, they've only had them together two times. It's been a mismatch all the way around. Now, my question now, <clears throat> excuse me, is we know that Mike McCarthy says, I want to just run the damn ball. I just want to run the ball. And, you know, there's what you want to do versus what you can do. I'm going to give you actually um, an example. Joe Gibbs was part of Air Coriel. And for those of you who don't know what Air Coriel, that was the Chargers back in the day with Dan Fouts. That was the modern, that was the first iteration of the modern offense where you're slinging the football and running is an afterthought. Air Coriel was literally just deep passing, deep passing, deep passing. Something the NFL had not seen before. Joe Gibbs came from that. And when he was hired as the head coach of the Washington Redskins at that time, he looked around and he said, Joe Theismann ain't a deep passer. I got an older, slow, you know, bruising running back. I got big offensive linemen. And he wanted to be able to throw the football like he did, but he didn't have the personnel to do what he wanted to do. So he changed up what he was doing. Instead of having two backs, he ended up taking the fullback and making the H-back and had basically the single back set with John Riggins. And they became a marauding running team that ended up winning three Super Bowls. There's what you want to do versus what you can do. Mike McCarthy has wanted to run you know, the, the football. He wanted to be ground and pound. But the reality is, is with the offensive line, the way it is currently constructed and in transition, I will say, because I hate to say it, but we need to draft a left tackle next year or a left guard and move uh, Tyler Smith to tackle. That Tyron Smith just can't stay on the field and stay healthy. His time is coming closer and closer to an end. But you don't have the offensive line consistency to be able to really run that way and you don't have the running back to run up the middle all the time you just don't tony pollard is getting battered and bruised and hurt 
He will not make it through the season if you constantly try and run him up the middle 10 times or more a game. He is a get me a ball in space guy. And that's the reality of it. And unless you think that Hunter Lipke is going to be that battering and bruise guy, what you've got is a quarterback who is very accurate, who can throw the ball down the field. You've got a Ferrari and C.D. Lamb who you can see can make hay. You put him outside as the X. You got another guy in Brandon Carr. Excuse me, Brandon Carr. Oh, my God. Brandon Cooks, who is another Ferrari that can get down the field. And you're developing a tight end in Jake Ferguson, who can be, hopefully, in the near future, a security blanket. You got Michael Gallup, who, I'm not sure, Michael Gallup and Jalen Tolbert. Okay, Jalen Tolbert's playing a little bit more than Michael Gallup is at the moment. But you've got receivers that can make hay. That is the reality of it. And with your offensive line battered and bruised, (coughs) this is where you evolve and say, we need to move the pocket. Let's get Dak on the edge. You have to evolve what you're doing because you have to fit with what you have. Running the football is a great idea. It's wonderful. But if you can't do it, the idea doesn't help you at all. You just stink. And especially when you're going against a team like the Eagles, that their defensive front, nobody's been able to run against them. And why should you when people are making hay down the field? If Sam freaking Howe can throw for 400 yards against the Eagles defense, that could have been a whole lot more at Scary Terry caught the ball on that third and fourth down. That's where you make your hay. And that's the reality of it. You may want to do a lot of things, but the reality dictates to what you actually do. And I think the Cowboys need to rely on the strengths of using Dak Prescott and C.D. Lamb and Brandon Cooks and Jake Ferguson and get the ball down the field. And once you do that, that's going to open up things better for the running game. And that's the reality of the situation. So this is where the team is definitely needs to evolve and get back to, uh, I want to say, a little bit more Kellen Moorish, more motion, pre-snap, moving the pocket, maybe some no huddle. And you do these things. Your offense is going to be much better than no motion, run the ball up the middle. And this is where Mike McCarthy, I hope that it wasn't just a one-game thing, that he realizes this is what we have to do to be able to get this offense really in gear. I understand his philosophy is he doesn't want to turn over the ball. But when you end up being that one-dimensional kind of running team that's only going to do the dinking and dunking, it's a little easier to defend. If you force teams to have to cover the whole field, you're going to be able to do better. So let's go to get up this morning because we want to, of course, listen to what they have to say. Jalen Hurts is a little bit hurt and doesn't want to talk about it and start getting the ideas of what they think is going to happen this weekend. Let's go to the tape. All righty. So let's see what negativity they've got about our Cowboys for today. That is what I love. They're always telling us we suck. Now, so here's the thing. It's kind of crazy. So basically, they're going to tell you that the Cowboys are ass-ass. Jalen Hurts is a better quarterback. They have the better roster. That the Cowboys are on the road. That they got no chance in the world. I don't even know why we're playing this game. But let's listen in. Josh Allen will be Which Josh Allen? Not only is, does he have a propensity for turning the ball over at uh-huh. times, 
but he's also dealing with a thrown shoulder injury, so I want to see how he's doing and how he's able to, to protect the football. And then Cowboys and Eagles, Indian Woody, we're going to Philly. What are you watching for in the NFC showdown? That man right there, Dak Prescott, if it's a big game, I'm watching to see how Dak performed. Listen, I, that, that, that performance that we saw against San Francisco 49 still hasn't left my mind. I want to see if Dak Prescott shows up and shows Fair up. Enough against his division rival in the Philadelphia He absolutely feels like an enormous game for him, if only for his psyche. And then on the other side, there are still all these questions about Jalen Hurts and his knee. And candidly, if you have any of those questions, don't ask him. Yeah, we good. I got, I got to ask anything new with the knee, feel better, feel worse, different. And... Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> Like Jalen Hurts at the podium, a little different than the Jalen Hurts when you're in the locker room. Plus, he also said last week, I'm done talking about the knee. So three and zero the last four starts. Three start. Right? I mean, Forty-four I points a game. This, That's Dak Prescott. Despite him not being 100 percent, what's their record? How good? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so despite all of that, Jalen is a guy. Even last year, there towards the end of the season, he was dealing with stuff, but you wouldn't know it. He had an MVP type season. So, Jalen. Injury or not, he's going to give you whatever he's got. So he's not going to tell you, I'm 75%, I'm 90%. He's not going to say so it. So taking the knee into the equation with mm-hmm. whatever it is we think we know about it, if we were doing this like a tail of the tape like we do with boxing, yeah. Eagles, Cowboys, where are you giving the edge at quarterback this Sunday? I'm going to Jalen Hurts. You know why? Because that boy Dick Brown going neutral right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that helps. That boy bad. What a bad man right like there. <laughs> Longest streak in history. He is just playing on a, on a totally different level. And so I know what I got in AJ Brown. Uh, That's Green is picking us. Oh, yeah, shit. I'm going Jalen Hurts too. Uh, I think the supporting cast is way better than Dak Prescott. So yeah. both of these guys had phenomenal games last week. And for Jalen Hurts, he needed every bit of it because his defense kind of let him down against the Washington. The Bears. Commanders. That said. You see Dak under my name for two reasons. One, the injury to hurts his name. Two, the last person in the world you would think has talked me into Dak, and it's Dan Orlovsky. What? Generally known what? as Dak's fiercest critic. He was in here the other day, and he was showing me all these different ways they've changed up their offense, a new mm-hmm. way they're using C.D. Lamb, a new way that they're running their offense. I see them adapting. I see them figuring out some of the things they've had wrong. I see them figuring out C.D. Lamb. Look at that. I see them figuring out, and Brandon Cooks, that's exactly right. I see them finally, oh, you know what? This, we're not going to be a smash mouth one heavy team, especially if we're not going to go out and trade for Derrick Henry, which was a, a tremendous mistake and one from which they probably will not mm-hmm. recover. So in the end, <laughs> the Eagles are the better team, and Hurts is the better quarterback, but right this minute with him Hurts, I like Dak. That said, Ooh. Wow, that's a lot, Brady. That's been a lot. I'm saying a lot, but yes, but that's because I'm only trying to keep up with you. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, I'm going to tell you what you said. Well, it well, says well, five well, less well, something's well, happening. I said, Kmart, right there, this is a must-win for the Cowboys. It's week nine, it is a must-win. Really, when you look at it, top to bottom roster, I understand you say the Cowboys are the better team, but top to bottom, when you look at this roster, which is the better roster? The Eagles. Okay. Yeah. Psychologically, I know, you know me. Yes. I'm on the side, I'm like on the side. Me. You know me. There's I like to start some shit. And the Cowboys, it doesn't matter. Playing Washington Commanders, playing other team, it really doesn't matter. It's about your matchups against 49ers, the Eagles, the Seahawks, the Lions. Like, we're looking at the, who are the best teams in the NFL, in the NFL. So let me say, let me ask this for a second here. If Ron Rivera, the first matchup, goes for two and wins that game before overtime, or if Scary Terry, Scary Terry, catches those balls, those passes that he dropped, and the commanders beat him, are you still saying that those losses wouldn't mean anything for the Eagles? Is that what we're saying? Is that what we're saying? Okay, I, I'm just trying to make sure because the NFL, a loss is a loss. See, Cowboys want to be considered one of them, right? You, how do you show up against those teams? Actually, it, it, let me put it this way. Okay, here, let me let me go this way here. Okay, so let me make sure I understand. So the 49ers beating the Cowboys because that's the good good teams, and then turning around and losing to Cleveland and 
uh, Cincinnati and these other teams, three-game lose streak, that still makes them a great team because they beat the Cowboys? But those other three losses don't matter? Is that what we're saying? Seriously? Okay. They saw how they did against the 49ers. This is an important statement game for them. Is this a must win for Dallas? If they want to be the number one seed? Yes. I think so. Coming up the bye. Well, coming up the bye. Coming up the bye. If the Cowboys win, then the Eagles are on they, their home. They are, they are playing. The Cowboys have an opportunity to play another game. And if they win back to back games, they would be in the top seed. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I, again, if you want to continue, if you want to be hosting playoff games as mm-hmm. the Dallas Cowboys, you can't afford to lose this game. You're going to fall that much further behind in the NFC. I know Eric's going to talk about the schedule and the Philadelphia Eagles. It is not a must win for the Dallas Cowboys. Why not? It, it, the, the Eagles Cowboys, got the Eagles, the, the Eagles' next six games, they have Dallas, Kansas City, Buffalo, San Fran, Dallas, and Seattle. After this game against the Philadelphia Eagles, the Dallas Cowboys still have four more divisional games, and you play the Philadelphia Eagles again. They only yeah. have two losses right now. Don't tell me about who the Eagles have to play. If the Cowboys lose to the Eagles, we're talking about the Cowboys. How are we looking at the Cowboys? What are the Cowboys able to do against the better teams in their conference? Yeah, if they lose, it's, it's bad for the Cowboys in the sense of us being in the media. But as far as them as a football team, they still have an opportunity it's to win. be 5-3. Will, will, the, will the fact that they just can't beat the good teams, will all say it. They, but if they lost to San Francisco and they get smashed by Philadelphia, will it be in their own heads that they can't beat the big boys? No. No. That won't be in their heads. Okay, fair enough. We'll see. We'll dive more into that as we go. Are the Chargers today to okay. the town All right. So there we have it. <clears throat> It's a must win for the Cowboys, and their problem is they can't beat the good teams. The Eagles, on the other hand, are winning against the garbage teams, but just barely. And that's okay. That's okay, because they're winning against the garbage teams just barely. Okay. It's on, good people. It's Thirsty Thursday. We got a lot to talk about this week. Peace.